classifying matter, physical versus chemical changes. So we're looking at, we've looked at it in chapter one, um, properties. So what properties are considered a physical or a chemical property? But now we're, what we're going to be looking at is how do we know if a change has occurred um, within some kind of matter, how do we know whether it's considered a physical change that has occurred to the matter or if it was chemical? Okay, that's what today's focus will be. Changes to matter. Matter is constantly changing. Its change is due to its response to changes in energy. Energy can make matter move or change entirely. Energy can either be added or taken away from matter. So when we're looking at um, matter, we, we think about, let's say, in, let's look at a, a nice cube. And we know that all matter is made up of tiny particles that are slightly vibrating. Okay. They're all slightly vibrating. That's what these little things are. Just kind of show that they're shaking. What happens is when you add heat to matter, you cause the vibrations to speed up. Okay. You cause the vibrations to speed up. Ultimately, 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 the particles will break apart. And here, if we look at an ice cube within a beaker, the actual ice cube has its own space, right? Its volume, its size, and it's based on whatever shape it was going into the beaker. But once we add the heat and the particle melts, the particles are still side by side. They're vibrating even quicker within, but now they're filling in the shape of the beaker. Ultimately, if we continue to add heat to this beaker, the particles are going to start to vibrate even quicker. They're going to move quicker. They're going to start to bounce together and then ultimately lead to the evaporation of the particles of water. They're not really disappearing. They're just pretty much leaving the container. But there's still, but if we were to close this up, if we were to seal it, the, the gas, the, the, the water vapor, will take the shape of whatever the container is. So we have our solid, which when we add heat will melt, taking up the shape of the container. So liquids will, keep, it will take the shape of the container, so will gases, but the solid, depending on the size of the, of the, the solid, when you put it into some kind of a, um, a space. Physical versus chemical changes. A change in state alters the appearance of matter and not its composition. Okay, so the example that we just kind of did about the ice melting. So ice melted to water, continue to add heat, and it evaporates. Molecule of water is H2O throughout all three states. So when we had it at that ice cube, still H2O. We melted that ice cube into the, the liquid, it's still H2O. The water evaporates because we continue to add heat, increase the heat, it evaporates into a gas and then it, it leaves the container, okay, still H2O, okay. So, this, this, so this, the idea of ice melting and the changing of the state or changing the state of any type of matter from a solid to a liquid to a gas and back, you know, back from, you know, to a solid again. That's considered a physical change. So a physical change is a change such as a change of state that does not alter the composition of matter. So we have the temperature here at minus two. So here are the particles of, of water. It's in an ice form, okay? So now we've got pretty much here, we've got the shape of the cylinder, but we're looking at it from when it was a liquid. Okay, so this was, so in, in other words, we had it really as a liquid. We put it in the beaker. That's the reason why it's taken the shape of the beaker. Because let's face it, we have a beaker like that. We, you know, get the ice cube from our freezer. It's not going to be in that shape. Okay, so for us to get that shape, we had to have frozen it in that shape. Okay, so what we have here, minus two particles of solid form like a crystal lattice. Okay, so it's pretty much all lined up. The particles and as we increase as we increase the temperature okay so now we're at plus two particles have now 
pretty much gone, left from that crystal lattice shape okay, and are now kind of vibrating a lot quicker and are moving around. Because remember, the particle of water on, at the brim, okay, at the top, is not the same. They're constantly moving. Okay, so you have that, that you know, beaker of water, that glass of water, the particles are constantly moving. So it's not always going to be the same H2O, you know, molecules up at the top. Okay, they're, they're constantly moving. So as we move the, te as we increase the temperature, watch what happens to the particles. They're still, okay, we're losing some, right, bubbling. So what's happening? What's really what's what's leaving? Mo molecules of water, right? So they're they're slowly evaporating as the temperature increases. So particles are going to start vibrating a lot quicker, and we're approaching the hundred degree Celsius mark. And what do we know at the hundred degree Celsius mark? Boiling. Boiling point of water. Very good. Chemical change. So we looked at physical change. Now we're looking at chemical change. So chemical change, changes that alter the composition of matter. Okay, so an example, iron rusting. Uh, decomposition of water. Now, this has nothing to do with melting or boiling of water. This has to do with breaking down, decomposing. Think of decomposition in types of reactions. Decomposing a molecule of water. So we're talking about pretty much breaking it apart on a chemical level. Right? Remember the, the uh, electrolysis of water, the lab that we did last year okay, with the hydrolysis kit where we put the water, we hooked it up to the battery and we saw the bubbling and we saw that one level was higher than the other because there was more gas. Right? There was more either H or oxygen. That's really what the whole point of, the, uh, of that, that part of the experiment really was. Okay. So, iron rusting, decomposition of water, wood burning, baking of bread, cooking an egg, lighting a match. These are all reactions in which to bring it back is going to be very difficult. It's going to require a lot of energy to get it to go back to the way it really was.